Okay, hi. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the session here. So uh, I had a couple things that I wanted to uh, mention about the current assignment 11, uh, and maybe actually do some uh, whiteboard um, um, walk through these things. So I, I kind of wanted to go through the rest of the tasks here. So uh, hopefully we'll see if anybody shows up, has some questions, or you know, I mean, as usual. I mean, I have been having lots of people emailing me and stuff, so I'm always happy to answer questions. So keep sending your emails and things. So, um, kind of as a reminder, in case you missed it on the previous uh, help session, um, um, there is an extra credit opportunity. So I encourage everybody to uh, take advantage of that. Um, so um, um, see the announcement in class. Uh, also, uh, we're not going to actually have anything uh, due next week. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to do our help session next uh, Tuesday and, of course, next not next Thursday either. So pretty much they kind of giving you the, the week off. So our next um, um, our next assignment will be starting the week after. We'll have to like two, two weeks after we get back from uh, the Thanksgiving break. Uh, two, two full weeks of classes and then finals week. So it's actually three more weeks, but we're mostly making use of those two weeks of actual classes. So we'll have two more units on uh, hashing and um, uh, what is it? Um, so after we get done with our binary trees here, um, we're gonna have um, a unit on hashing um, and then uh, we're gonna have a unit on the uh, standard template library uh, after that. So, all right. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about this assignment here, assignment eleven on trees. So, get rid of this here. Um, so. I actually walked you through doing the first task, getting the insert method. So, you know, if you didn't see that, you should go back and look at the uh, uh, previous um, uh, help session video. So, um, I wanted to, uh, well, I'm probably gonna, you're gonna be seeing the code here again for this as well. So I, I kind of wanted to, to walk through this real quickly, first of all, uh, and then we'll talk about the find and then the other ones in order to implement the um, remove method. All right. So um, the first one, that, that the first task was to implement an insert method. It's, it's actually a, a little bit more complicated than find and then, uh, and then also more complicated than task three and four's method as well. But we kind of had to do this first so we'd have the methods so that we could you know uh, get our tests set up and things like that so we really had to do this one um get it running here so um let me, let me let, let, let's just walk through it let, let's show you how it works so um when you insert a new value when, when you insert a value into an initially empty tree so initially when you start your tree let's go back and look at our l binary tree um, L binary tree has a has, has some private member variables, uh, member functions. We haven't been using those, but you need to um, implement um, basically most of the all the methods you're implementing for this assignment have a public facing interface for the method, and then they have a, a, a corresponding private method that takes a node as the first parameter, um, and then the same two the same other values um, as the the public method. So the reason why we do that is because there, there's one private member variable, which is the root of our binary tree, okay? And if you look at the constructors, uh, the, the root should be constructed to be initially null. So um, um, so, so if you look at our, our uh, default constructor, um, it sets root to be the null pointer. Um, it sets the tree size to be zero, right? Or any any of the constructors should be doing that. They, they set root to be the null pointer and, and um, the size of the tree, the number of key value pairs in the tree to be zero, right? Um, don't forget, if I, 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 I'm sure I mentioned it on Tuesday, but don't forget after you in, get your insert working, you do have to uncomment this call to insert in the um, constructor for the, the, the array-based constructor here. So anyway, the, the public method for insert, when you call it, you're gonna give it a key value pair, right? And, um, and also the public, 
thing does is it calls the private method starting at the root of the tree. So we have to basically, all these methods, we have to search for the correct node. Um, in this case, for insert, we need to search for the correct location in the tree, the correct null leaf pointer, where we need to create and insert the new node uh, correct uh, into our binary tree, okay? So, so let's show what happens there for that. So, um, so if, if your tree is initially empty, right? Um, and let's say, I'm just gonna use key value pairs of, of integers, which what some of our tests do now. So let's say that we're inserting a key value pair where the key is, let's make the key 10 uh, and the value is 10, all right? So I'll just use the, the a key and a value that are equal. Uh, and think of these as integers or something like that. So, all right, okay, let's, let's make it a little bit more. So let's say we use keys of integers. Think of these as like um, employee IDs and then string, and then we'll use strings as the value. So like the, the name of a person. All right, so initially our, our root node, which is a pointer, is null, all right? Um, so the, the, the tree is initially uh, null, empty. Okay. So let, let's see what happens for the insert when you um, call it with the null pointer, right? So, so this is going to call the, the private method, and, and the private method should be returning a, a node. Okay. So th this is why we need to assign the root to the return value of our private method because the, the private methods will be creating new nodes. Uh, and they might be returning something. So in this case, we need the new node to be returned so that we can set the root of the tree to this new node. So when, when the tree is initially empty, the first item that's inserted will become the root of the binary tree, right? So let's see what's happening. So that, that's our base case, right? Away. We hit our base case directly. So in this case, um, when we come in here, the node is gonna be null because the root of our tree is currently null uh, when we insert our first time. The, the key was 10 and the value was Bob, right? So we're actually going to do this. This creates a new node dynamically, right? Um, and by calling the constructor with the key value pair, it will create that node to have that th this key and this value that we pass in here, right? And then it returns that new node, okay? So, so that's how we set the root back there, okay? So uh, again, so all that happens for this base case is we create a new node with the key value in it. So we create a new node with the, the key 10 um, and the value Bob, all right? Now remember, we, we, we are going to be uh, ordering our tree by keys, okay? So the, the, the values don't really matter. The, the value could be something more complex, like a, a structure, right? So, so I always think of these as like database, you know? So now we're getting to things, common things for database. So the key could be the employee ID, and the value could be like a whole employee record. You know, so we could have everything in there, employee name, social security number, pay, uh, title, department, uh, uh, work history, you know, right? a full record, right? Um, so, so actually, uh, we didn't set root here, but then, so this gets returned, right? So when it gets returned, we assign root to be equal to that node, which means that our root pointer is going to be pointing to that node that we just created, right? So let's let's say that now we're going to insert another value. Our second value is going to have an employee ID of five, and it'll be sound. All right, so let's see what happens in that case for our insert. All right. Here again, I mean, you know, if we go to the public method, um, it's just going to call it. Uh, notice, I mean, it's still going to be assigning the the value uh, that's returned back into root. Okay, so let me just let me mention something about that as well, right? But but in this in this case, root is not null. Root 
has uh, uh, is pointing to a node now. Now, both of the child nodes, the left and the right child node of that node are gonna be initialized to null when you construct it. I probably should have drawn that when I had it up there. So we'll add that, but um, so let's go back to the private method here, All right? So uh, just for that first thing I started saying, so notice the, the last thing that needs to happen on the insert is that the node that we pass in gets returned, right? So, so if we don't create a new node, if, if we don't end up uh, uh, at a null pointer where we return that new node that we create. Instead, uh, we uh, do something with the node, go left or right, and then we just return the node, okay? So the, the, the effect of that is that now we're just gonna be returning the root back uh, to the public uh, interface that called us with the root, root node. So it'll just reassign root to the same root, okay? So, so nothing will happen there for that assignment. Okay. Um, but yeah, in this case, you know, um, uh, the, the, the node is not null. So the, the, at the root of the tree, when we first come in here, um, the, uh, the, the node is not null. So we're not going to hit the base case. Instead, we're going to go down here to the else case, right? Um, and um, so basically, we're going to look if, if the key is less than the current node's key. Uh, we're going to insert, but we're going to insert by getting left, right? And if the key is greater than um, the, the current node key, so less than or equal, uh, we go left. And if it's greater than, instead, we go to the right node, okay? So let's, let's show that real quickly, right? So um, here, like I was saying, we've got a left pointer, and I'll just label L, and a right pointer, and I'll just label R. These are both currently null. So when we first constructed our node, the, the left and the right node pointers would have been set to the null pointer to indicate that, um, that there was no subtree uh, on either one of those, okay? So when we compare five to 10, five is less than 10. So we're gonna recursively call insert, but we're gonna pass it our left pointer, which is null, all right? Then, then we've already seen, so, so now when we call the, the, the private version of the method recursively with the null pointer, that's going to hit the base case, right? So then a new node is going to be created with this key and value. Right? Um, th this node's left and right are going to both be null. And then we're going to return this node, this new node, again as the result. All right. And then I'll go. I'll go back and look at the code here. But but basically, we remember the returned value, and we assign that. Since we went left, we assign that to be our left pointer. Okay. So, so the result is going to be that, that that we reassign our left pointer to this new node that was created at, at the leaf here. Uh, so here, back to that. So, so we had called it recursively. Uh, so when we came in um, for the second recursive call, the, the, the leaf node was null. So we cre created the node and retur returned it, okay? So here we had, we had gone in to the left side. So remember when we inserted the node, we remembered the value that's returned from there, right? And then we, we set our left node to be that return node. Okay. So again, um, if we call something on a non-null node, it, it will just return uh, the node, right? But if we, if we call something on a null node, it'll create a new node and return that null, null node, okay? So a lot of times we're just reassigning the, um, the, 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 the value over itself again, but that doesn't matter. But, but sometimes whenever we create a new node, um, um, instead of null, we return back the new node that's created and then we end up assigning it to the left or the right. Okay. Um, so let's just show one more. So let's let's say that we insert uh, a value that's bigger than ten.
All right, so we're going to insert employee 15 has an invalid in here, right? So uh, the public will call it the root, will come in here, the, the root will find that it's not null, but it will find that the key is greater than the, the, the value um, at, at our root node, so it will go right. Okay? So when we call on, on right recursively, um, our right node is null, so it'll hit the base case. It'll create the new node and it will return that. And then the code will set the right node's pointer to the return node. So it just returned and was created. Okay. So that, that's basically how the insert works. Okay. The, this recursive thing. Okay. Um, one or two kind of points before I move on here. So, so we're going to look at the uh, the, the find next, right? So, so let, let's talk about uh, the uh, the performance, the the uh, time complexity of doing operations with this tree. Okay. So notice, um, I mean, binary trees end up being kind of like a binary search as long as the tree remains relatively balanced. All right. So, for example. You know, we've got one node here, we've got two nodes, and it's going to double every time, right? So, just as an and, and, and you know, like for insert, um, at most, whatever the height of the tree is, that's going to be the, 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 the number of actual comparisons that we're going to have to make before we find a, um, a, a root node that's null, okay? Whatever the maximum height is, right? Um, so, at this point, we're not going to, have to make more than two comparisons before we find a null node, which is where we're going to insert the next node at. Right? So, but, but that, that has a surprising, if, if you're not used to that, that, that has a surprising um, um, uh, result because, you know, it's, we're doubling the, the number of nodes for every level. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. That's, that's an exponential growth. So that's really the, the log base 2 of things. So for example, um, let me just bring up um, um, like a calculator. Um, I need to get a function that does log 2. I can't remember. Uh, I think there's something that will do the log base two of. Um, yeah, there we go. So, um, so for doing the, the log logarithm base two. Okay. So, um, if I have n is a thousand twenty four, um, the maximum depth is ten, right? So I only need to do ten comparisons for time. Compare that to if I was doing a, a, like a list where I potentially have to search the whole list. So, so you know, n would be uh, order of, of n, 1024. But, but now I only need 10. This is log n, right? Um, and that greatly, you know, so, so if you go to a million, um, the, the, you know, so, so by going three orders of magnitude, a thousand times bigger, uh, we've only increased the depth from 10 to 23. Right. basically about twice the depth, right? So for n of a million, you know, if I have to do like a linear search to insert or find the value, I'd, I'd have to do a million comparisons. But I only have to do 23 comparisons as long as the maximum height, as long as the tree remains relatively balanced. So the maximum height is 23, right? Likewise for a billion, you know, so this takes a significant amount of time if I had to do it linearly. But a billion is only going to grow to about 30, 35 or something, 33, right? So, so if, if, if even with a billion nodes, I only have to do about 33 comparisons before I get to the place to insert or before I find the record if I'm doing a uh, find to, to search for some key 
and return the record associated with that group, right? So this is significantly faster than, um, than a linear search that we would have had to use for like our lists and things, right? Uh, and in fact, you know, we, we've already seen a, a log in, a log base two in, uh, in a binary search, right? So if we can keep our list sorted, we can do a binary search uh, and that performs in log in time as well. And it's, it's really for the same reason because for a binary search, every, every time you make a comparison, you eliminate half of the items from consideration. Right. So the same thing happens here. As long as the tree is relatively balanced, um, uh, when you go left or right, you've eliminated half of, of the items and you're only having to consider the other half. Right? Um, now, with one caveat, uh, let me um, um, mention one thing about this. So there's nothing, though, that guarantees the way that we're doing our binary search tree that guarantees that the tree stays relatively balanced. Right. So, for example, let's say after I insert those three nodes, that I insert um, employee. Let's say I have a, a list of ten employees, um, and um, I insert them in the in order: um, employee twenty, twenty-one, two, twenty-three. Right, and we insert those all uh, in order, right? So what happens in that case? Um, so if I insert 21st, it's gonna go here. I didn't give a value for these, but, but that's fine. So these are, they all have employed. So we get 20, or 21 is greater than 20. So 21 goes to the right here. 22 ends to the right of 21, and so on, all the way down to uh, 30, right? So now, even though I've only got, you know, 13 items in here, the height of the tree is 12. So potentially, I mean, it's, it's basically, the, the worst case of a binary tree that you don't keep balanced is linear time, right? So if I inserted all the nodes if, I, if, the, if the nodes, if, if the keys were sorted and, they, and I inserted them in sorted order, right? So, so if I just started with 10, 20, 30, 40, or, or, or whatever, 10, 11, 12, right? I would end up with essentially a linear linked list, not using any of the left nodes here, right? So, so the worst case behavior of our binary tree can devolve down to uh, a linear performance, a big old man, instead of, uh, you know, our best case. And, and it's really, it's kind of our average case. So as long as the um, keys are relatively random um, or, or mixed together when you're inserting them into the tree, you'll get close to uh, kind of your best performance, which is log two of it, right? Um, and really though, you know, if you use a professional library that uses a tree to organize the data structure, most likely it will do some things to balance. So if you read our textbook, it talks a little bit about um, um, uh, keeping a, making, uh, when you do the inserts to do some special things to keep it balanced. So basically what happens is that, um, if I have a uh, the height of the tree, um, you know, there's various ways you can detect that the tree is unbalanced. If the height of the tree becomes too unbalanced, um, I find uh, a new node to become the root and then reform um, it uh, so that it comes back to being balanced. All right. So that's um, just a little bit about, you know, kind of one of our uh, big topics on this course, uh, talking about performance in terms of uh, algorithmic complexity of algorithms and things. So, so but, you know, in, in the, 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 the expected case, um, our complexity is log, log of n uh, for the inserts and the finds and things here, as long as the tree stays relatively balanced. And that, that does depend that, that the keys are kind of, um, randomly ordered, you know, they're, they're not um, all coming in 
um, in some order so that you end up with a highly unbalanced uh, tree. Um, okay, so let's, um, let's talk about the other tasks. I'm not going to give any more code, but I'll talk about the algorithm for the other tasks, okay? So for the find method, um, um, you need to have the same structure like we had for the insert. So you can have a public find, uh, the, the, the find, the, the, um, um, the signature, you, can, you should be able to find, I don't know if I gave you the signature for these, but, but um, um, the public signature for the find should be given to you in the base class, right? So, so you can start uh, and you should uncomment um, this, not the binary tree no, but the binary tree.hpp, right? So for find, um, find, you pass it a key and it returns a value, right? So that's the public method. The private method is going to look the same. It takes a key and returns a value, but uh, you pass in the, the node um, for the recursive uh, uh, working of the function as the first parameter, okay? So all of our public and private methods, basically the private method is the same as a public except with an extra parameter at the front, which is the, the node that you pass in when you're, you know, in order to search the tree to find that, you know? Um, so the, the, the base case is kind of the same. So if the null, if you come to a null node, that means that the search failed, okay? So, um, so in that case, uh, you should throw an exception. Um, um, to inform the caller that they were expecting uh, that, you know, so, so basically we're saying that um, uh, users that are using our binary tree should not be searching for keys that haven't been inserted in the tree yet. If they did, um, probably something has gone wrong and we want to inform them um, that, um, uh, you know, they were, they, were, they were searching for a key that hadn't been inserted yet. Otherwise, um, the general case is going to look pretty similar, although simpler than for the insert case, because you don't have to worry about returning back a value. You just have to, to keep going left or right um, recursively, uh, comparing the key. Uh, so you've got kind of two cases. Either the key is equal to the key that you're searching for, in which case you just do a return, you return the value. Or the key is not equal, so in that case, if it's less than, you have to recursively go to the left. Or if it's greater than, you have to recursively go to the to the right. Okay. So um, let me redraw my tree back to kind of how I had it. Although I'm going to add some nodes here, so. So, for example, since three is less than five, it should go to the left. Uh, but if I've got a value seven, seven should come, um, uh, well, seven's less than 10, but seven's greater than five. So call that Kevin. Um, and let's insert um, two more nodes, make it a little bit unbalanced. So let's, let's have um, a node eight. Um, and maybe about a, a 12 and a 15. So 12 is bigger than 10, so it should go to the right. And 15 is bigger than 12, so it should go to 12 right in this tree. Um, and that will be... Um, So everything I haven't drawn um, are null nodes. So I won't draw those in, but, but um, so, so these are the, the, the full nodes in the tree that we'll search here, okay? Uh, so by the way, the, the height of, one of the questions in the quiz, the height of this tree is three, uh, four. So, so the, the, the lowest node down here is, so this, this is level, this is height one, height two, height three, and height four. So we've got some nodes all the way down as far as four here, right? um, and like a path from 
10 to 8 goes 10, 5, 7, 8 uh, in this tree. And that has a path length of three, actually, because you have to follow one, two, three links to get from the start node to the end node. Um, all right, so for your find, let's say that we're trying to find, um, we're trying to find nine. So we're trying to find the employee name uh, who has an employee ID of nine. Right. So when you initially call find with the key of nine, um, it's going to call the recursive search on the root node searching for key nine. 10 is less than 9, so in that case, you should recursively call your insert uh, on the left node. Now here, 9 is greater than 5, so you should recursively call um, insert on the right node. 9 is greater than 7, recursively call search uh, on this right, right node. 9 is greater than 8, so you're going to recursively call search on each right node, which is null. So that should end up being the, one of the base cases that we talked about. So if you ever come to a null node, it means the search failed. So we should throw an exception. Um, but if we instead search for seven, um, so we're going to first compare 10 to 7. Uh, 7 is less than 10. So we're going to recursively call with our left node. And then when we're on that recursive call, 7 is greater than 5. So we're going to recursively call with the right node. Um, at that point, you, know, so you should be also be able to check for equal. So, so you know, first check if the keys are equal. So the key for this node is equal to the key that we're searching for. So we found the results. So we're going to return the value in that case, which is kept. Oh, by the way, um, and, and I, I think that gives you the idea of how fine works. And so, by the way, um, to get the keys and values out of these nodes, again, um, you shouldn't, you can't use the um, member variables directly. So, for example, again, if we go back and look at the binary tree node, um, like the key and the value and the left and the right um, pointers are all private. So, um, so for example, if you want to compare the the the, the key to, to the key you're searching for, you have to call get key on your node, so, and that will return the key for the value. And then, if you find the value, like I just um, just had in our final example, you're going to call get value on the node to get the value and return that. So the node uh, node. And call get value on the node that gets you a value and you return that value as the result from your find function. All right. Um, all right. And then um, let me let me let me talk a little bit about the uh, last three methods. So as I mentioned before, uh, really. What we're trying to do then is implement a remove method. That's the only other public um, method that's defined for our binary tree interface. So, so again, if you go back and look at the um, binary tree base class, um, besides insert and find, there's a remove. You don't have the other two uh, because those are both going to be used as, as private helper methods uh, in order to implement the remove. All right, But you should work on them first before you try and work on remove and get, get, and get them working. Um, the hit minimum is relatively simple. Um, so let me just describe it. The get minimum um, doesn't take any parameters as input. Um, and um, So you need to return a node. So you're going to be returning a binary tree node pointer, 
right? So the, the base case is that once you come to a node that doesn't have a left child, that means you found the minima, all right? So, so let me show you how this works here real quickly. Um, so I might need some more some more nodes here to uh, illustrate this better. Eh, maybe not. So uh, first of all, if you call get minimum on the root node, basically all you do is if there is a left subchild uh, for, for the node, you just recursively go to the left. Okay. So, so if I say get minimum and I pass the root, um, it's going to recursively call get minimum again on this left node. This one still has a left node, so it's going to call get minimum again on its left node. At this point, um, this node, node's left node, is null. So that means that for, from where I started on the tree, which is the root of the tree, this is the minimum key in the whole tree, which should be true. So, so the node to the most left from the root of the tree should be the minimum for that tree. Okay? So this is just going to return, it's going to return this node. Right, so it has to return um, um, the node itself. Right? Um, and so that means that when you recursively call these, uh, the, the, your, your call to get minimum is going to return a node. So you have to return whatever uh, your recursive call to the function return. Okay? So, so once this comes back, we should end up returning this node, a pointer to this node, as a result of calling get minimum on the whole tree. Right? Now, Get minimum is, is actually used to find the minimum for subtrees by the um, uh, by the remove function. Okay, so if I call um, well, like an easy case. So if I call get minimum uh, and I start at this node here, so immediately if, if I start with this node with a value of twelve, it has no left sub sub child. So that's the base case. So its left subchild is null. So it's just going to return um, itself, the, the node of twelve. So that that's the minimum for the subtree. If I, if I start searching at the subtree, okay. Um, so the realized that I had a duplicate key there, so I didn't really mean to have a duplicate. Um, let's call that, um, I, need, I need a little bit of room here, so let me make this 15, 20, and uh, 25 here. So um, so I can have a, 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 another node here or two. Um, so let's say we have a, a node 13. Uh, well, so um, so I mean again, if, if I call the, the get minimum starting at this node as a subtree, the minimum of this subtree is twelve, right? And, and the get minimum is four. So here it has a left node. So we're going to recursively call get minimum on this node, at this node thirty. The key of 13 still has a left node, so we're going to return call get minimum on its left node. Now, when we get to here, 12 doesn't have a left node, so we should end up returning a pointer to the, uh, the, the node in the key 12. Right? So that, that, that's the one with the minimum key of the subtree. Right? So that, that's, that's what the get minimum um, is doing. Right? Um, So the link minimum then, um, we basically want to remove um, that, remove the node with the minimum value for some subtree. So again, we might not start at the root always when we call delete minimum here. So the base case is that if, if the node has no left child subtree, 
um, it means that we are at the, the, the minimum for the subtree that we started at, right? So as soon as we find a node with no left subtree, that must be the minimum for the subtree that we, we, we started our search for to delete the minimum in. Um, and in that case, we return the right subtree because we're going to delete this node uh, and we want to point the parents node, um, the parents left node to this node's right subtree, all right? Um, so, so, so let me just kind of uh, explain that, uh, demonstrate that real quickly, right? The, the base case, okay? So, um, so let's say that we do delete minimum from the root of our tree here, right? Um, Basically, so this has been too interesting. Let, let, let me show you uh, maybe a little bit more interesting. Let's say that three has a node four. Um, on it, okay. So if we do a delete minimum for the root, um, what we do is we need to keep recursively going down until we find the minimum node, right? So um, like we did for the, uh, the, the find minimum. So you know, we, if we start here as the root for our delete minimum, um, it has a left node, so we can recursively call here. This one has a left node, so we can recursively call here. Uh, and when we get to here, it doesn't have a left node. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna return um, our right node, okay? So, so we return the right node. Um, why do we do that? Because the, the node that we return we're going to, when we call it recursively, whatever is returned, we're going to assign that to be the left node. Okay. So that does the right thing because if, if I assign, if I return my right subtree back to my recursive call here, it's going to assign its left to be what is returned here. Um, and that maintains the tree because all the values to the right of this minimum node have to be bigger than this, but they have to be less than its parent because because we are to the left of the parent, right? So, so if I assign that again, this node could have more, but they all have to be less than five in order to have been uh, down here to the left uh, of five on the subtree. Right? So by assigning my right here, I know there's no left. So this is the minimum node in the, in the subtree that we were searching for. Um, But um, that would, um, um, as long as we do something so we can delete this node here, free up memory, uh, we would end up with our tree correctly where we deleted uh, the minimum node from the root of the tree. Okay? Uh, now this works again. You know, normally this delete uh, node, delete minimum is going to be used on subtrees. So, for example, if I do delete minimum starting at the key 15, we'll go down to here to 12. Now 12's right sub node is null, uh, but that works fine. So, so if the right sub node is null, um, um, I mean, you know, we're just going to return null, right? This node will get deleted somewhere. And when we re return null, we will set our left to be what we return there. So, so we'll just delete that node. Um, So that's, that's the basic idea. So I don't know if we can make an example that would give us. Uh, um, oh, that's, that, that hopefully gives you kind of the idea. So, so let, let's go back and talk some more about um, um, the, the kind of the general case. Okay? So like I said, um, if there's no left subtree, uh, it means we've recursively 
traverse down to the minimum node, in that case, we just want to return the right subtree. Um, um, because we're going to delete that node, I'm not going to say. So the general case is that uh, we continue searching left. Okay, so um, if the node has a left subchild, you call get minimum recursively on the left subchild. Uh, and then whatever is returned from calling yourself recursively, uh, we set our left subtree to what is returned from calling ourself recursively, all right? Well, yeah, that, that's really it for get minimum. So I've kind of left that. We we we, um, uh, we delete. We, we really the, the node that we're trying to, to delete. Uh, we really want to call delete. You know, to free up the memory for that node. But we do that um, in a different place. We do that actually in the remove. Okay. Uh, because basically, what we do on, on the remove is we first call find minimum to get a pointer to that node that's going to be deleted. Uh, and then we call delete minimum, which will actually uh, fix up the tree to, to get that minimum node out of the tree. But then we, we, we've already got the pointer uh, from our initial call to find minimum. Then we can safely call delete on it to, to actually free up its memory, if that makes sense. All right. So um, to wrap up here, the, the, the remove method is difficult. So, I mean, I think everybody should be able to get the first four tasks working. Um, and then once you get to the fifth task, I mean, of course, you should also, you know, be able to get the base case to work like for a failed search. Um, and maybe the, you know, uh, you know, work through these in order that they're given here. So, so you know, if you get that working, then, then you ought to be able to uh, make some progress on the, the general case, right? So, so let's just describe this. So, so the base case is that um, we're gonna call remove the the, um, um, the signature for remove again you can get that from the um, um, the the base class for our binary tree so remove uh, again we just pass in the key that we we'll want to remove right oh and notice um, I should point out that uh, uh, remove like find returns a value so if you remove uh, a key, we actually return the value for the key that we just removed for, for various reasons. That, that's part of the standard interface, right? So, so when we do find a key to remove, that's another thing that the, the find um, minimum is going to do. So, um, so the, the failing search um, is relatively easy to understand. I think most people should be able to get this to work for the remove. So basically, um, we basically need to do a search like you did for find. So it's, it's really the same thing. So uh, so um, if if we the base case is that if we ever come to a node that's null pointer, that means that the search failed. So you should just throw um, an exception again, right? Uh, saying something like the, the, the key that you're trying to remove wasn't found in the tree. Right? <coughs> Otherwise, uh, in the general case, you do have to do kind of the search, okay? So um, there, there's, you know, there's, there's three cases. The, the key is less than, or, less than or equal to, so you should always be checking less than or equal, or the key is greater, so, so check if the key is strictly greater, or you found the key that you want to remove, okay? So, so for, for, for the, these two general cases, it, it's simple. You're just going to make a recursive call. So, um, um, uh, yeah, so I see in my instruction, I, sh I should emphasize, it should be, I should say we want to remove if the key is less than or equal. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, if it's equal, then we've, we've found it. Um, so uh, in that case, yeah, I mean, that, that means that we found the key that we're going to remove. So, so we're just going to be, in this case, we're just going to be strictly checking less than or greater than, right? Um, so uh, if the key is less than the, the, the key of the current node, then call remove recursively on the left subtree. Um, and um, uh, remove does need to return um, uh, the, the recursive version of remove um, uh, 
Um, oh, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit wrong about this. So the, the signature for remove is a little bit different than the other two. So the, the public signature for remove returns a value, but the, the private version of remove returns something different. It returns uh, a node pointer, um, um, which we need which we need to do in order to successfully remove things. Okay, so so the, the the signature for the private method takes a node pointer as input for the first parameter and a key, and it returns uh, a node pointer result. You know, so a binary tree node pointer result uh, as a result instead of a value. Okay. So um, so yeah, if the key is less than, you need to recursively call uh, on the left subtree. The, it, it, the 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 recursive version is going to return a node, so you need to assign that node result. Um, um, to be the left pointer, right? So, so if you went left, whatever is returned back needs to be assigned to left pointer, like we did for the insert. Uh, same for for if you go right. If you go right, you need to call it recursively on the right subtree. Uh, it's going to return a, a node pointer and you need to assign your right pointer back to that because that's how we delete things when we find them is by re returning something different than our than the, the node that we are, were originally called with recursive. All right. Um, all right. So the, the, the difficult part happens uh, when you find the value, the node that you want to delete, okay? So, and in fact, this takes multiple, um, there's multiple kind of cases you have to check for here, right? Uh, and this is complex enough, this makes, this makes the uh, remove function big enough that um, um, I almost feel that, that making another kind of sub function to handle this part when you've gotten to the point where it's equal could make sense, but, but you don't have to do that, right? So the idea is, uh, so, so you know, you could handle these like if, and then uh, if else, if else, and then uh, else. You know, so finally, that you mean you've come to a node where you found the key that you're searching for to remove. Right? Um, so you should try and follow the algorithm that we have here. So um, that means that we're going to be deleting that node. So we want to call delete on this node ultimately because that this is the node that we want to remove or delete from the tree. So start by creating like a temporary node pointer uh, and point it to this current node, right? Um, now, basically what we're gonna do depends on whether we have left or right children of this node, right? So, so yeah, if, if this node does not have a left child subtree, it means that either this node is a leaf so it, it means that it, it might not even have e e either subtrees, left or right, or uh, it has a right subtree. But in either case, we want to set the node to return the right subtree of this node uh, and then delete this node. Okay? So we have to uh, remember the right subtree called delete on the, the, the temporary variable um, and then return the right subtree. Okay, if that makes sense. So, uh, so if, if that's true, that means that the node um, either has no children or only a right subtree. If that's false, that means that the node only has a left child. Uh, oh, that means that this node either has only a left child or both uh, left and right children, okay? So uh, another special case is that um, uh, if the node uh, does not have a right child, then it only has a left child. Um, so in that case, you know, again, we can just return the left subtree, right? Because it's, so these first two cases mean that we only have either only have a right subtree or only have a left sub. Only have a left subtree or only have a right subtree. In both cases, we can just return our one and only subtree because we're deleting ourselves, and that will be will work fine to be the um, um, uh, the new subtree for the parent that called us. Yeah, 
that makes sense. Okay. So you do something similar here. Uh, you were you um, you remember the left subtree. Um, so, so we remember the left subtree. We delete this node, which you should have this temporary pointer to to use to delete it, uh, and then we return the left subtree. All right? Otherwise, then the most complicated case. This is where you have to use the find minimum and the get minimum. So otherwise, we checked, um, and if you get to this point, you should only be doing this if the node you want to remove has both a left and a right subtree. Okay. So let me quickly draw that, um, uh, what the difficulty is of that, all right? So that, that's the difficult case. So let's say that you were going to remove, um, we're going to remove five. Play Sally um, um, got a new job, went somewhere else. I guess we're removing her from payroll, all right? We want to remove employee ID five, key five, right? So when we search to here, uh, we find the node, um, and it doesn't only have a left subchild, it doesn't only have a right subchild, it has both, okay? So what we need to do is um, we need to remove that node and delete it. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the left subchild um, um, need to rearrange things uh, somehow here. So what we really want to happen is we want to promote this node. So we know that this node is greater uh, than five, and this node has to be greater than any node in the left subtree, right? So we want to make this node the, the new, and we want to find the uh, the minimum on here and attach the, the left of this one to this subtree here. Okay, so um, picture wise, we want to remove this node. We want to make this one our new left, um, and um, we want to find the minimum on this subtree, which is, is this node here, um, uh, because when we find the minimum, it's going to have no more children, and its minimum has to be bigger um, than any of, of these. So, so we want to set the, the, the left child of the minimum of this subtree to the subtree here, right? And we should end up with a tree that's still correct with the, the five being removed, um, but you know, uh, still maintains the binary tree property that, that everything to the left or less than, everything to the right or greater, okay? So that, that's what we're, we're, we're doing here. Um, so, um, when we have both subtrees, we want to find the minimum node on the right subtree and swap this node's value with the value of our minimum node. Okay. Um, um, oh, so um, I should have read this first. So, so we're using a slightly different um, 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 approach here. Okay. So let me read. Let me let me redraw that. So um, All right. So uh, our slightly different approach. So, so again, we still want to remove five. Five still has has both. A left and right subtree. So um, we want to first find minimum to find the minimum node of the right um, which is going to be seven here, right?
So we first use find minimum to find the minimum node of the right subtree. Um, then we're going to use set key and set value methods to copy this value from the minimum node into the key and value of this node. Okay. So what we're saying here is, so, so if we find minimum um, on our right subtree, that's going to be this one. Um, we're going to stop right here at seven. So we're actually going to swap these values, seven and five, and, and, and Kevin and Sally here. Um, and yeah, by doing that, then we can actually safely just delete that um, and um, because this minimum node we know has no left sub child. So whatever we found was the minimum node. Um, um, so, you know, maybe I should have made a better example here to, to, to make this so that the minimum wasn't at the root here. So let's let, let's change the example a little bit. So let's say we have five and seven, uh, but let's say there was a six here. So in that case, the, the minimum um, is uh, this note here. So we would swap those two. Right? Um, okay, yeah, so, so that makes it because the, the minimum of our left subtree uh, it is um, smaller than anything over here in the left subtree, but because it, it, it's over on the right side here, it has to be bigger than anything over here. So by swapping that, um, um, you know, it, it means that everything here is, is bigger than this value, everything to the right, but everything to the left is, is less than. Okay, so as you can kind of see, uh, swapping that one to become the new node there makes sense. Then all we have to do is, is delete that node, right? So that, that's all we're doing, right? So find minimum, we first get that node. Uh, we, we would use that node after we did find minimum to swap uh, the minimum on our right subtree with ourself, with, with the node that we found that we're trying to remove, right? Um, and then, After you uh, find it, the, the minimum and you swap the values, um, we can call delete minimum on the uh, the right subtree, right? Uh, because you know if, if you implemented your delete minimum correctly, we will call delete minimum on the subtree, uh, and we'll go down here and, and like we worked through before, um, it will. Um, Remove that node uh, from the tree, basically, right? Where where we had to swap the value that we were trying to remove. Right? Um, so, and then kind of one final thing, um, like I, I mentioned before, the delete minimum function actually removes the node from the tree, but doesn't actually deallocate the memory. Um, so after we call delete minimum, um, you know, we, we had found a pointer to the node. You want to keep around that pointer to the node when you did the find minimum. So when you call delete minimum, it will remove the node from the tree. At that point, um, you can actually call delete on the node that you found using find, find minimum on the right subtree. All right. So uh, hopefully that 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 helped cleared it up there, right? So, so you know, there's a lot of steps um, and you need to correctly reuse the find minimum and the delete minimum. And uh, you might, you know, um, um, uh, make certain that you're like, you're deleting the right thing. So, so the thing you delete here on the left and right subclass is this node. But the thing you delete here, if you get to the most complicated case, is that node that you found as the minimum node on the right subtree. So, so you're deleting a slightly different thing uh, on those cases. So. Um, all right. So. 
uh, I'll go ahead and wrap up the session then. Um, uh, you know, as usual, if you have questions, uh, send me emails or, um, uh, or, or whatever. Um, ask questions on your GitHub repositories. I'd be happy to look at your code and things. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So we'll see you guys later then.